Okay, so um, <clears throat> 11 a.m. Pacific, U.S. Pacific time and 2 p.m. Uh, U.S. Eastern times. Uh, so let's get started. Um, okay, so uh, today, like I like to do, is um, data visualization workshop. Um, this is um, it's kind of like a new thing uh, we are starting out. Um, so. Um, we want to talk about uh, something about uh, visualizing the data. And we realized that we have a lot of experience in this area, um, but we haven't really uh, done um, many stuff. So we wanted to start sharing this information or a skill um, so that more people can uh, easily visualize in their own data. So uh, today is the, uh, part one. Um, before, let me just explain myself, just in case you don't know me. Uh, my name is Kan Nishida. Uh, CEO, co-founder of Exploratory. Um, I, uh, I started Exploratory uh, four years ago, 2016 um, spring with um, other partners. We all used to be working at Oracle, uh, developing uh, data science related products. And I was running the team for building uh, data science, machine learning, data visualization, big data, and so on. And then like, we started realizing, uh, you know, data science area has progressed and evolved so much and so fast, especially in the world of the open source uh, community. So we realized that like, I think it's time to uh, start best product to democrat uh, democratize data science. And that's, so that was the beginning of our journey four years ago. And here we are. And then we, we, what we are trying to do is uh, bring in this third wave. Uh, third wave is about uh, making the data science more accessible for everyone, regardless if you can program or not. So that's uh, what we are doing here. And, and then one of the things we do is, uh, basically the main thing we do is to build a product called Exploratory, which provides a simple uh, UI for doing the data access, uh, data wrangling, data visualization and analytics, and also uh, communicating the insights you get out of this like, data science uh, workflow. So, um, so that's the um, exploratory that provides a more than a simple UI to do all of these uh, uh, functionalities of works. <clears throat> okay, enough about me, enough about exploratory, let's get into the core part of today's topics. So, um, data visualization workshop part one, visualizing summarized data. This is really um, about sort of like kind of basic stuff and we are planning uh, other uh, topics as well. So as it goes through, you know, different types of data to visualize. So like time series data or distribution correlation, uncertainty. And also the last is um, uh, data wrangling because, you know, like visualizing the data is one thing, but most of the time, like the data you want to visualize is not ready for to be visualized. So you need to uh, massage or clean up or wrangling, uh, transform the data before you even visualize. So that's the last part, part of five. So from part one to part five, every week, um, um, we like to provide these contents. So today, the, the first one, the part one, visualizing summarized data. Okay. And there are four uh, sort of like a topics. Oh, let me just sometimes. Let me make sure there's a chart, very cool. Oh, okay, good. I just wanted to make sure, sometimes what happened last time, um, my voice was no, okay. I just wanted to make sure that's good. Um, all right, let's keep going. Yeah, last time like we did something like this and like my voice was not really captured by the microphone. So I just wanted to make sure, seems okay. All right, so <laughs> let's go again. Uh, so these are the contents. Um, so four topics. So choosing the right chart types um, based on the data type. And then like, I'd like to go into more detail around like sort of like a basic chart features. These are the chart features that are um, provided inside exploratory, uh, but basically the kind of the features that like address most common problems uh, when you visualize the data. And then the third and the fourth, uh, we, I like to introduce um, slightly different type of charts uh, other than typical like bar, bar chart, line chart, um, you know, area chart and so on. So those are kind of cool, uh, fun charts. So like I'd like to introduce those uh, if we have time. Okay. 
So let's start. But before we begin, uh, a couple of things. Um, I, we've created these slides, and I'm going to share these slides uh, in a PDF format with you guys. So you can take a look at more details if you like, why, you know, um, if you want to do it by yourself, uh, which I highly encourage. But uh, you know, inside the export, there are a couple of things you need to do before you even visualize, right? So like first, you need to create a project. And once you create a project, inside the project, you want to import the data. This uh, whole series, we want to use, we're going to use this Airbnb uh, New York listing data. Okay, so, and you can actually get that data by clicking this URL link, go to our uh, export uh, inside page, and then there is a, that data page. And from there, you can download as a CSV or you can download as an EDF um, either way, and then import that data inside the export tree. All the detailed steps are uh, in the slides so that you can take a look at later. Okay, so now let's assume we have imported that data. And then uh, let me just go here. Couple of things I wanna do is, um, wait a second. Here, I have already imported the data before um, this seminar. And then like, let's take a look. So this is summary view, uh, right? So we're gonna spend most of the time uh, under this chart view at the top, okay? But let's take a look at, like, these are the uh, columns that we have like 43 columns and 50,000 rows of the data, about 50,000 rows, okay? And then a couple columns, uh, couple, uh, one thing we, I like everyone to notice is that here's a data type. So for example, this is the ID, this is like an ID for the list, and then it's a numeric. And the next one, the name is character. So these are the called data types. And then there's a host underscore since, and this is the day uh, each list gets, uh, gets on the list uh, or gets registered at um, Airbnb property. And then, so that's that day. So like, this is like a date type. So you can see like uh, different type of the data, uh, data types. Okay, and then data type, understanding the data type is very important or at least understanding the difference between the data types is very important because depends on the data type, you wanna use a um, different type of data, uh, sorry, chart types to effectively visualize or find patterns. Okay, so let's start with this numeric data type. Okay, so, what are the data types though? It's like, so I like to start with the numeric data type, uh, but um, there are other data types. And I listed uh, five data types here, but those are like the most common. And that doesn't mean these are the only data, uh, data types. We have other data types in the world as well. But if you understand these five, and most of, most of the data types can be actually one of these. Okay, and then in this part one uh, workshop, we want to cover only like ABC, like a numeric character day. And let's go one by one. So numeric data type is about a numerical data. It's typical stuff, right? So it's like, for example, when you look at um, you know, these columns, it says numeric, and then it has a numbers basically. So, so numerical data type, the, uh, sort of like a characteristic is it's continuous. So the numbers are kind of like, uh, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13 or so. And then when you have 10 and 11, like you can expect there are some numbers even between. So like 10.1, 10.2, 10.3 and so on. Then, of course, there's an ordinal relationship. Like 11 is bigger than 10, 9 is less than 10 and so on. Okay. So having said that, uh, let's go back to um, summary view. So if it's the data is numeric, that's easy. And then you can start visual. I mean, like before you even like go to the chart, um, you have this thing called histogram. Uh, I'm going to uh, go into more detail about the histogram a little bit later. Um, but here, um, it looks like um, numeric data types. And then I want you to notice cup one thing here. So this is a price. And the price is the price for each list, each apartment, hotel, and so on. And it's somehow it's registered as a character, right? But intuitively thinking like this is supposed to be numeric. We wanna, we wanna actually compare like, for example, like, you know, like what are the price range? What are the most common price and so on. But this comes as a character because the data has a dollar symbol. So if the, the, the system or computer thinks, hey, this seems like a, a character data type, 
but it's actually not. So, and then that's happening in the, um, many other columns like weekly price or the cleaning fees, security deposit, and so on. Right. So this is actually a problem because if we want to visualize this type of data, we'd rather visualize as a numeric. Uh, so then you can see, you can do even like a calculation. If it's numbers, we can like calculate the average, we can calculate the sum total and so on. So that's typically the first thing you want to make sure that your data you want to visualize are uh, in the right uh, data type. So here, we want to convert this character to numeric. And you can go one by one, or you can go like, for example, by using shift key or control command key. I'm going to select multiple columns like this. Okay, and then uh, let's convert this uh, data type from character to numeric. So click on the co uh, column header menu, and there's a change data type, and it convert to numeric. So I'm going to just select on this, and then all these columns I selected are already uh, listed here. Now all I need to do is just click around bottom. And then like, all these five columns being converted as a numeric column. So like, now if it's numeric, then like, I see the histogram instead of like, this bar chart. Okay. And then I can see like from zero dollar to ten thousand dollars. Oh my gosh, it's just one night is a ten thousand dollars. What kind of house is that? I'm curious. But nonetheless, there is that range. Um, Notice one thing though, like a right-hand side, there's a new step is being added. So the right-hand side, this is, it says steps. This is um, uh, when you transform or clean up the data, that you start seeing those uh, additional steps. Those data wrangling stuff is the one like I was talking about. This we're gonna cover more in detail at the part five. Okay, so today like we're not really uh, caring much about that. Okay, but now, now that we have this price column as being numeric, so we can start visualizing. So first question um, for today, uh, where is the, here you go. The first question we want to answer, what is the price range from, uh, of these properties from the lowest to the highest? We actually kind of, uh, we all actually saw it in, in the summary view, but uh, you know, sometimes you can visualize it the, uh, by creating a new chart and then to get that answer. But in this case, we already know that. Um, what are the common prices for the majority of the list? Right, so from zero to 10,000, but what are the most common uh, properties or the apartments or in the, uh, what price range? And how much is the most expensive list, which is 10,000, we already know that, but you know, what is the higher range of the majority of the list or so on? So to answer that question, so let's start creating the chart by clicking on this uh, chart button. By clicking this, this is kind of an instant uh, creating a shortcut for creating a chart. You can actually go to the chart view to start creating a chart from scratch, but um, let's do the shortcut. So click on that, and then we get the histogram. This histogram chart though, it's basically the same thing we were seeing in the summary view, except it's more like wider space or bigger space. Um, so also like it gives you more flexibility in terms of like how to construct this histogram. So, uh, so here's the left hand side, there's a control area. But just what I'm, I would just wanna make sure uh, we all know what the histogram is. Right, so histogram is, uh, many of you guys might have already seen it, but just to get that basic. So it is to divide the numerical values, in this case, the price, right, the price values, into a set of range groups, such as from $10 to $100, $100 to $200 and so on, and show the data size, in this case, number of rows equal number of lists or number of properties for each range group as a height of a bar. It's, so let's say like we have a bunch of um, you know, apartments or houses and with different price, uh, price values. And then like you um, base, um, line them up and then you know, make something like this. And then you don't really get any patterns or trend or anything like that by showing up like this, right? So you wanna see, you wanna group them together by the price range. What I mean by that is if we divide those numbers to, let's say like five groups from zero to 2,000, 2,000 to 4,000, 4,000 to 6,000, so on. Then you, some patterns start to emerge, for example, in this particular case. 
looks like 4,000 to 6,000 has more apartments on, and houses. And then like, as you go to, for example, like 8,000, 10,000, there are less houses or something like that. So this type of the pattern is very useful uh, when you visualize the data to, uh, for human being to understand intuitively. So that's what the histogram is. So like, we, let's go back to um, here. This chart itself, histogram, gives us like an instant idea of like what is the highest. So like here, looks like uh, this range uh, is even hard, super like, ooh. Uh, 9,000 to 10,000 range, there were like 40 properties. And opposed to that, uh, the less range, so like a zero to 1,000. $1,000 for like one night is pretty expensive though. But in this, uh, uh, range from zero to 10,000. So the, the first price range group, the zero to 1,000, uh, has most of the apartments or the most of the properties are in this range. Okay. Now, I think the part of the problem is this, is because of these outliers. So there are few apartments or houses are uh, in this price range, but most of the staff are in this like a uh, sort of like zero to 1,000. So we want to get rid of, let's say, like filter out this something called outlier. And the outlier is something that uh, we want to cover more in detail at the part three. Like we're going to, in the part three, we're going to talk about uh, how to visualize the variance on distribution and correlation uh, type uh, data. So I'm not going to go into detail about how outlier, how you define outliers, but intuitively speaking, just that those extreme values. So, and then typically those are less, like not many of those. So let's get it over. In the histogram chart, there's a checkbox for include outliers. If I click on and click on here to uncheck, and then those outliers are gone. Um, then now like we see from the zero to 300 range. So not even like zero to 1000, it's actually zero to $300 range and most of the data are here. Um, <clears throat> and then you can see even more detail from like about like uh, $30 to $100 range. So those are the most common um, price range. And then there are something like, you know, more than like $100 and then $200 and so on, but it gets less and less. And then if you want to see in more detail, so for what I mean by that is like, this is like a 33 to 66. It's about like $30 uh, range, but if you want to see like more like a $10 range or something like that, then you can add, adjust the number of bars here. So now it's automatic. And I think, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe like about 10 bars. Let's add like, make it like a bigger, like a 20 or 25. And you can start seeing uh, different type of pattern here uh, as you add more bars. Um, <clears throat> then you can really see, okay, it's not even like 30, it's about like $44 to, uh, $100, so like these are the range that we have more apartment. And then like you can see like there are some around here, 100 to 150 and 150 to 100 and so on. I'm not gonna go into too detail about this, how the data has been distributed because that's the topic I like to do in part three. But you, what we are seeing here is that numerical values, which we put down X axis and then like create the, these groups, in this case, 30 groups based on the price range. And then like we see like how many of the, uh, in this case, the properties are in each range. Okay, so now this is uh, good, but now histograms sometimes don't work very well. Well, so in this case, we are using a price and which has a lot of unique values. For example, like some property might be $100, some property might be $101, $102, $105 and so on. But there are only the, the type of the columns and numerical uh, columns with a handful unique values. So what I mean by that, let me just go to the X axis. Um, then change to the accommodate. Accommodate is the numbers that how many people can stay in a given property, like apartment or house. And then like I'm gonna, uh, it says 30, but I'm gonna just click on this, uh, make it automatic. And then let's include the outliers back as well in this case. 
And then notice that from zero to X axis, zero to 25, and then these are integers. So there's no such thing of like uh, 1.5 people accommodate or like, you know, you can have like 3.5 people kind of stuff, even though there's sometimes the children and the kids and stuff. But typically when you go to the Airbnb site, it, it says two people, four people, something like that. So it's, those are the numbers, uh, special, specific uh, type of numbers called integer, right? So then when you have like 25, that means you have only 25 unique values. Then that's a tricky area. So is this numeric? or is this categorical or categories? Because there's only 25 values or 25 groups in a way. So in that case, the bar chart might work better. So histograms sometimes work better, some bar chart works sometimes better. And it depends, it's really up to you, whatever works for you, whatever would make it easier for you to actually get that information you, you want to answer. Then you wanna try it. So in this, let's try it uh, here instead of histogram switch to the bar chart. And then the bar chart in exploratory automatically um, create the bins or groups or categories uh, when you assign a numeric, uh, numerical column to x-axis. So what I mean, it's like, it's like basically the histogram, right? So like from one to 5.80, 5.80 to 10.6 uh, dollars. So it creates these like five groups based on the uh, numeric equal with range. But in this case, again, the accommodate has only 25 unique values. So why don't we assign the bar, why, why don't we create a bar for each value, for example, one, two, and three, and four. So in the case, you can click on here, default is now category, uh, as category, but let's present this as number, as it is. So, then you get like, uh, for example, one accommodate one has its own bar, accommodate two has its own bar and so on. Then we have like 25 or 20 or something like that. And then it's basically the same thing. After like a 10 accommodation, those are very few, like very rare, rare um, uh, properties on Airbnb. And most of the uh, properties has, I think, uh, accommodate two or maybe less than four, like one, two, three, four inch. These are the majority of the uh, properties uh, or lists on the Airbnb. <clears throat> Okay, so this type of things, sometimes you wanna try bar chart and then sometimes a histogram. And then also though here, the bar chart, if you assign, let's say like a price, uh, we actually use a price for the histogram, but let's try it. what, what happened like if we assign price to the bar chart, uh, X axis for the bar chart, and then you get something like this. And then it's super skinny line. So like, I'm gonna just zoom in by using the mouse like this. And then what's happening is each price, so for example, uh, this like $43 has its own bar, $44 has its own bar. And then it's, it's not really uh, easy to find a pattern because it's just too granular. So in that case, uh, the histogram works better, like when you go to the histogram and then uh, exclude the outlier, this is what, exactly what we did. And then you can see there's some more patterns because you aggregate, you create artificial groups uh, based on equal width range. Okay, so that's the numerical uh, data type we've been seeing. So now let's go to the, uh, the next topic is the character data type, right? So there is um, a bunch of uh, uh, columns and one of them is called neighborhood. This is uh, uh, the data about the lists of properties on Airbnb in the New York, like the properties in, in the New York, okay? So uh, I'm more specifically like New York City. Um, then there's a bunch of neighborhoods. How many neighborhoods? 223 neighborhoods. And we wanna see like which neighborhood has more uh, properties than other uh, neighborhood. We can already see like a first uh, sort of a top six, so like better for the stuff is like 3,974. But we wanna see, uh, you know, how about the others and also compare all of them. So let's click on this chart icon. It's again, it's a shortcut to create a bar chart. 
And then basically, like we were seeing the top six before, but now like we're seeing all of them, 229, all neighborhoods. Okay. And then the problem here is though, there's just too many neighborhoods that we can't even see because see this, like between a Bedford, uh, uh, Stuyvesant, and then Bushwick, there are supposed to be like a few uh, neighborhoods, but it's not even showing up because there's no space for those texts uh, to uh, be crumbling. So we can uh, use a mouse to uh, zoom in. And then if we can see like, oh, okay, the second is William, Williamsburg, the third is Harlem, and so on. And then like we can see the um, <clears throat> different um, neighborhood. And then we can see like the top two of sort of these two neighborhood has more, uh, much more properties on the Airbnb and so on. So this case, again, is basically the same thing because um, the X axis in this case, a category or categorical or character. And that's why it's like a, a bar chart is pretty much like it's a great tool to go. Um, great chart to go. And another one, uh, uh, we're gonna use this chart later, but let's uh, finish up another data type that we wanted to cover here is the host since, which is a date data type. And in this case, similar, uh, here's a chart in a bar chart. And then when, you, when I click on this chart icon, this will create a bar chart again. But this time, this is very interesting because this is like a date time. Uh, data type, so uh, that case, the default is, is using year as the group. So when you look at the data, this host since it has like a 2008, for example, September 9 or 2009, February 2nd and so on. So it's basically the, at the day level. However, at the chart, the default is aggregate all these uh, data by the year, like 2009, 2010, and, uh, and so uh, 2011 and so on. But you can actually change it. And that's the cool thing about this date or project city, um, date time data, uh, data type. Um, so for example, instead of a year, I wanna see by the monthly how the uh, properties uh, have been added to Airbnb and we can see that by months, or this is called round. So that this month meaning, if it's September 1st or September 5th, September 15th, September 29th, all of them becomes September 1st. However, it keeps the year information. So like 2009, September, um, and so on. How, however, if you don't wanna keep the year information, let's say like, I wanna focus on just September. I wanna compare like September and August, ignoring which year that, that could be. Then you wanna go to like under the extract section. And here, uh, if I select the month, there's a few options. Let's say like numbers or January, December. So let's select the short name. Then you have like a January, February to December. It seems like there are a missing value but basically from January to December. And you can see like May, June, July, it's the summertime and people somehow um, start adding uh, their properties to the Airbnb. But we don't know which year, but at this point, but you know, you can see like just focusing on the months for now, and then you can see uh, the summer trend like uh, here. <clears throat> Now, if I go back to, let's say, like, no, I want to see the year information. Then like, you want to select under the round and select the months. Then now, like, okay, it's same August, uh, let's say like, here's uh, October, but this is a 2015 October, not a 2014 or 2016. And then like, you can see like overall trend going up and going down, and going up again. Here's a one key th uh, thing though, like I want to point out. Um, there is something called visual cue. And this is a, a very important and interesting topic uh, about the data visualization. And I'm not gonna go into too much detail here, but um, there are these different type of a visual cue that we human being can recognize. Um, okay, and, the, and the, we are basically using these information, these cue uh, when we look at that chart. Okay, so even like a bar chart or area chart, pie chart, scatter plot, or whatever this is, we are always using one of these or maybe few of these cue 
to understand or recognize the differences, the patterns and trend and so on. And then as you go to the left, it's easier for us to recognize the differences or patterns. When you go to the right side, especially the color side, it's, we are not that good at recognizing the differences or patterns and so on. Which means you want to use the easier side to identify the patterns, also present what you're finding to other people. But now let's focus on this like a left, uh, second from the left is called length and fourth from the left and slope. Okay, so <clears throat> length and slope, these are two visual cues. We turned out uh, we are using length as a visual cue uh, when we look at the bar chart. And when we look at the line chart, we actually using the slope. So what I mean, so when we use length, uh, but when we use bar chart, we are really comparing the length of the bar and two. And then we see like which one is higher and how much higher is like a two times higher, 50% higher and that type of things. So the bar chart is great uh, because it's easier to recognize because it's using the length as a visual cube and then compare um, or next to, uh, you know, to the next bars or other bars and so on. Now, when we use a line chart, we actually use a slope as a visual cue. And slope is about like how, you know, they're going upward or going downward and how much, um, you know, uh, the, how steep the slope is, uh, you know, when it goes up or goes down. And then therefore, like it's all, you're always sort of like comparing the next value and also the overall values. Okay. And then when it's a time, um, <clears throat> date on time data, when we call it time series data, it's actually um, the, the line chart works better because you always, when you have the time series data, or especially time presented as the x-axis, you always, what your brain trying to do is like if this trend is going up or going down. So that's really the focus thing. Instead of like how much, so for example, like, you know, 50% more, 30% less, that kind of stuff. Although not always like that, right? So like sometimes you actually want to see like how much, um, you know, 40% growth or 50% growth, you know, when you have the business, hey, like this year, like 30% growth compared to last year. In that case, probably, or most likely the bar chart works better. But when you want to understand sort of like overall direction and the line chart works better. So let's, in this case, let's try to uh, uh, switch into line chart. So bar chart to line chart. And then from here, what we can see is, looks like from 2010 to 2014, an overall trend is going up. And then it's kind of like, you know, it it's, looks like my bi-monthly is always going up and down, but it seems like a 2014, 2016, it's almost a flat. And then going down somehow like 2016, 2018, uh, the number of the properties being added to the Airbnb start decreasing until 2018 and then after that started going up. This is for New York. So you can see the overall trend here. And then here, um, don't get me wrong. It's not like, you know, it's a very precise formula. Like, hey, this is when you have to use a line chart. This is when you have to use a bar chart. But just to know that uh, when we look at the bar chart or line chart, we are using different visual cue. And then once you understand it, then it's up to you which works better uh, when you, want to find the patterns on the trend or understand um, that data and also how you want to present to you know other folks for what you found okay so those are the um, uh, how you choose a chart based on the data type okay so again there are more data types but those are the three major very typical common uh, data types now, like, I want to go to the introduction to basic chart features in exploratory. Um, these are the very useful uh, ones, and then like, they're a bunch, but it looks like a, a lot, but it's very uh, similar things. Um, so from A to I, and let's go one by one. Okay. <clears throat> and this is sort of for my memo, like I'm, I might forget, like which I might, I don't want to skip all of this. So anyway, go, let's go back to the, you remember the neighborhood, uh, you know, we are looking at. Right, so x-axis, we have all the neighborhood, like 200, 229 or so. Right? And then like okay, y-axis is the number of rows, that means the number of the properties. 
En dan ik weet land dat ik een beter foto stijf was aan de Williamsburg, door de two neighborhood with the most um, uh, properties on the Airbnb. Okay. But now, looks like most of the staff, like almost like a 60% or 80% of the uh, neighborhood had less than like um, uh, 100 uh, or so. Then that case, okay, like maybe like we don't really need to uh, look at those. Let's focus on the, you know, maybe like around here or so-called maybe like a, you know, uh, top 10 or top 50 or something like that. So in that case, you can, you know, under the uh, X access menu, there's something called limit. And this limit is based on this like 229. You can apply either condition or top bottom to limit the um, values. What I mean by that, you can limit, and then there's three options, condition, top, bottom. In this case, you can see the top. And the number of the results, for example, if I type like 50, that means top 50 bars uh, stay, remain. If I change to the top 30, I get uh, 30 bars or 30 neighborhoods remain in the chart. It depends, you know, what, uh, when you, uh, what are you trying to do? But in this case, if you want to focus on the, the uh, neighborhood with significant or like a certain amount of the properties, then this might be uh, good enough, especially when you want to present, when you present a bunch of stuff, like people can see the text or can see the whole thing. So uh, sometimes top 30, top 50 uh, might work better. Now, one another problem is sometimes typically like when you have like this is still okay, but um, when you have something like this and it's kind of hard to read this text, it's try to kind of got um, change the uh, angle, so it's not as hard. Like for uh, you know, but it's better to, for example, here orientation. If I click on horizontal, then now all the neighborhood names are display in horizontal way. This is how we read um, character. So this might work better. And then again, it's really, there's no rule, there's no science um, about like between the vertical and horizontal. It's just easier to read. So like whatever works for you. But now that like, you can change that to um, bar orientation. Okay. So now um, let's say sometimes you want to, when you present this chart, you might want to show, for example, like how many better for this, like 3,974. Instead of like moving the mouse over the bars, like you just want to, when you present though, like uh, you just want to see the numbers, right? Uh, to other people just want to see the numbers instead of like moving the mouse over. So in that case, uh, here's a property. By clicking on the property, uh, there are a bunch of, stuff you can do but one of them is called show value on plot and then when you select above and click apply then you see all the numbers so here then okay not only uh, which part are higher but the moment you see oh okay so these are three thousand and these are two thousand and so on so it's uh it's a little bit convenient the next thing i want to do is um we can change this y axis right now like a number of rows but how about like we want to see uh the average price for each neighborhood which neighborhood is more expensive than the others so then y axis here and then like i'm going to select the price um and then instead of some some doesn't make any sense like we mean total like what uh, there's no value for that well, maybe, but I don't know. Uh, so <laughs> here, let's use average or median. Like in this uh, top today, part one, we want to focus on just average. So like, let's use the uh, average or mean. Then you can see like Manhattan Beach has like 1,000, uh, that's like an average uh, price. And then next one is Fort Wadsworth and like 800 and so on. So these are the average um, we can see, okay. Now, um, if we want to see like which, what are the um, pr uh, neighborhood are more expensive than the other? In that case, let's say like, uh, wouldn't that be great? Like if we know the overall average or the 229 uh, neighborhood right here, and what are the overall average? And then we want to see like how much uh, these certain uh, neighborhoods are more expensive or less expensive. For example, when we said like this, said like 414 five vector, is uh, is more expensive than the overall average or less, or if it's more, then how 
how much more uh, expensive. In that case, a um, couple of things you can do, but um, today we want to use a reference line, which is like just draw the line somewhere around the average. And then we can see, we can sort of compare and make that a baseline. To do this y-axis, um, and the right now is the price, and then there's a reference line. And then from there, uh, select the mean average, and then click bo apply button. Now this black dotted line, that's the overall average. And I'm gonna just change that to change the color to uh, red. And then, so now we have this uh, color, like a red color, that's the average. And more, all of them, all the neighborhoods are more expensive than the average. That doesn't make sense. Why is that? Because average is supposed to be like somewhere in the, in the middle, right? So, well, it turned out this average line is for all the neighborhoods and 229. Some of the, most of the neighborhoods are not even shut because we have a limited. So, click on this limit setting. And if I, if I take that out and show all the neighborhood, and then we can see see that um, some of the neighborhood, say, I'm gonna just um, zoom in, and some of the neighborhood, most of the neighborhoods are more than uh, average. And of course, if I, um, let's say, uh, I can just move this uh, by using this uh, uh, drag and drop X axis, and some of the neighborhood are less than the average and so on. Okay, and this is, uh, this kind of started getting too crowded, um, that you can change the font size uh, from the property. Let's say, for example, like, I'm gonna just change that to six or something like that. And oh, that's, that's a bad idea, maybe like a 10. And even 10, uh, that's actually kind of hard to see, but um, <clears throat> you can start, uh, you can adjust it how the crowd size. Okay, so now next thing I wanna do, I wanna actually bring that, um, this uh, Y axis is too much, so like let's, limit that again to show only the 30 neighborhood. And the next question like I wanna, I have is, what type of the property types are more common in each neighborhood? What I mean by that? When I go to the summary and um, uh, there is a column called property type. Where is that? Um, oh, here property type, and then the apartment is the most common property type. And then there's a house and townhouse and condominium and so on. Now I wanna see like this, you know, the, the, all the neighborhood have the apartment are the common, or maybe some of the neighborhood had more house and apartment. So I would like to see such a pattern. So go to the chart, and then right now, we gotta be careful, like the price is the y-axis, but we wanna see like what type of the property, we're talking about the number of the lists uh, with the property, number, uh, a number of rows are more important than the price here. So I'm gonna switch back the number of rows. So here, uh, for example, Bedford Stuyvesant, 3,974 properties, and out of which, how many are apartment, how many are townhouse and so on. And then this uh, difference line, we don't need that anymore. So like, I'm gonna just uh, remove the difference line. Okay, so now we want to do is <clears throat> uh, break down each bar uh, based on the property type. So I'm gonna select the property type for like, we can use a color to break down. So um, property type, here we go, assign that. And then there, oh, and this value also is kind of like now, it's too much, we don't really need it. So I'm gonna just uh, take that out. There we go. And then this view gives us immediately the, uh, uh, the information about, okay, like we thought, uh, most of the property, uh, neighborhood has more apartment than the other property type. Uh, when you kind of like go through, like there are few neighborhoods, like uh, East Flashback and Flashing, has more of this house uh, type of property. Um, but other than that, like most of the property uh, neighborhood has more uh, apartment. A majority of that property, uh, majority of the list are apartment indeed. 
So now we have uh, this, and then here, right hand side, notice that there's one group called others. Um, so this, get, don't get confused, there's other, this is like a data has other, like a Airbnb defines some property as other. But at the bottom, it says others. This others being created automatically by this chart. Um, what I mean here is like when it says other group frequency 20. So when you have, when you assign a column with more than 20 unique values, then it automatically uh, create this thing called other groups. What I mean is keeps uh, in this case, top most frequent 20 unique um, values or categories as they are, and then make everything else, all the other uh, categories or the values uh, to put them combined and then uh, and place those under the other group. Okay, so that's why like, we see like 20, then one. But if, for example, you don't want to see it, like, hey, uh, I don't need something like that. I want to see all the property types. Then you can select none on the click apply button and see all of them. But typically, uh, most of the staff uh, have very few <clears throat> data, so like you don't really even really need to even show. So in this case, for example, like I want to see like just top ten property types in terms of like number of records, number of rows. Then I type the ten and they click apply. Then now like I see like top ten and everything else now like uh, becomes the others. And again, basically the same view, same type of information. So most of the neighborhood have the apartments as a uh, common property type, and a few neighborhood has more houses and so on. Okay. And then now I like to do two more things here. Number one, here is an apartment, and then, um, oh, sorry, there's a boutique hotel, and then there's a hotel. And then, you know, maybe it's important for Airbnb to um, recognize the difference. But for me, hey, these are the hotels. So like, I want to put them together as a hotel. And so like, how do I do that? Like, we, I can actually go to that color and then we can edit the display name. Okay, so, and then like, in this dialogue, they said like, here, boutique hotel, is, I, I want to call it a hotel. And the hotel is a hotel, so I'm not going to do anything about that. And I click OK. Then now the boutique hotel is gone because now that becomes a hotel. So whenever like I see the orange, that can be hotel, that can be boutique hotel. Then you can edit uh, this area quickly. And the next thing I like to do is, so what's the part, so here is flashback flashing. I, I see like this house types, more house types, but I wanna see that these are like a 50% or these are 40% or what are you talking about? And also here, we have also like a, a lot of house for the better photo exam. Neighborhood is that like how much of that ratio is like a 20 percent, 15 percent to do? Basically, what I want to do is I want to make each bar to be 100 percent at the same length, then show each color uh, to show the ratio. Okay, so in that case, basically, we're talking about this like a, a scaling thing, so the number of rows scaling. We want to instead of using that real values, if we want to change that to percent. So go to the Y axis, then select the window calculation. Under window calculation, there are a couple of things. Um, many of these have a lot to do with the time series data, uh, which I'm gonna cover in the next week, in part two. Today though, I'm gonna use this percent of. And then percent of and summarize, uh, summarize value using, and there's a couple of options, but the default is a total. That means percent of total. What I mean, if I click the apply button, each bar becomes 100% bar, and then each of the sections showing percent of total of the beta for the stipe sand. You remember uh, um, beta for the stipe sand, I think they had like 3,900 uh, property or something like that, out of which 76% is at the apartment. And then the house is 8%, so the less than 10% is the house. And then as opposed to, so here the fresh flashing, 42% um, is the house, and then apartment is only 34%. So uh, we can say like more houses, so uh, the house type property in the fraction and so on. So that's how you can get, uh, you can calculate the ratio for each bar. And then like you can see different 
pattern emerge. For example, like Midtown has more hotel, uh, Midtown in Manhattan, which kind of makes sense. And so like some property have um, a lot of apartment, most of the staff the apartment, some property has more uh, hotels, some property, uh, sorry, some neighborhood has more house or uh, condominium and so on. <clears throat> okay. So what's left? Uh, I think that's pretty much, I think we cover all, most of the stuff. And at the, uh, so after this, there's two things. Uh, introduction to scatter with aggregate or bubble chart or introduction to map. Map is pretty simple, so like I'm gonna keep that. Like probably I can't, I don't have, uh, we don't have time to go into the map, but I, at least I like to introduce this scatter with aggregate or AKA uh, as known as bubble chart, which is um, very convenient. So um, let's see, eventually, I like to create a chart like this, okay? So we've been focusing on uh, a number of rows, a number of the lists, right? Um, and also we look at the price, like it's more expensive or less expensive. There's another uh, column called review score rating. And the review score rating is like each property is being reviewed and then we give it like a, a score between zero to 100, 100 is the best. So, I like to create a chart like this and each dot or each circle represent each neighborhood. And it's then so that I wanna see like which neighborhood are reviewed high and the, and, the, uh, and the more expensive or which neighborhood is actually reviewed high but, but less expensive. And those are the neighborhoods maybe I should go, right? In the current situation of the travel, but let's assume we can. And then, so this right-hand side bottom, that's the place that we are looking for as opposed to left hand side top, like low review score, but high price. Whoa, that's sort of like, it's kind of like I gotta think twice. So we wanna re uh, visualize something like this. Okay. So now let's create a new chart and then select the, uh, there's two types of scatter. Scatter with aggregate, no aggregate. No aggregate is about uh, raw data, raw R-A-W or looking at the distribution of the data. Then uh, some, it works great to understand the relationship between the two variables or correlation, um, so on. But today we are focusing on summarized data. So like we wanna select the with aggregate. Okay, now these two are kind of very uh, same thing, only the difference is aggregate or no aggregate, and you can go between. So if you may, mistakenly select one of the charts like so unintentionally, after you assign the columns for X and Y, you realize, hey, you know what, this is not what I wanted it. You can always switch, okay. So now let's select the uh, review score for the X axis and the Y axis, we're gonna, we wanna select the price. Okay, and then uh, both of them is not the sum. We wanna actually get an average. Uh, average or medium. In this case today, uh, let's go with, keep go using average. Okay. And once I do it, and typically if you select the scatter with no aggregate, and then all the each uh, property becomes each dot. And this is what you would see. But if you select this aggregate with aggregate, we call it like a bubble chart. Oh, this somehow tends to sound, but we want to keep it average then everything get aggregated. And then like we have only one dot. This is like an overall um, average score and average price. But we want to see this for each neighborhood. And in that case, we can use this group by. So let's break this down uh, by the, uh, the neighborhood. Where's the neighborhood? Um, here. And then now each neighborhood becomes each dot. For example, this is Manhattan Beach, which is, has the, uh, the most expensive average price. And then here, uh, the lowest score with West Farms, lowest score, and then also almost like a very uh, poor price as well. Okay, and then we can just zoom in, like a uh, majority of the neighborhood are gathered around here. And then like you can see like, okay, which uh, neighborhood, is, uh, you know, are located based on the intersection with maybe score and price and so on. From here though, what I like to do is I wanna see, uh, draw the sort of um, 
uh, the line to create four sections like this. To do, we can draw, draw the reference line for average on the x axis and y axis. So x axis, I'm gonna use a reference line. And again, we sometimes like people, uh, in, especially this kind of data, median can be better, but um, I'm gonna just keep using average because average is easier to understand um, at this point. And then, so I'm gonna just draw the average line. Okay. And then like also like I wanna draw the uh, overall average for the price as well. Okay, so now that like, we have the four sections, right? So left hand side top is like a low score, but high uh, price. And right hand side bottom is high score, but um, and also, uh, no, sorry, high score and then low price. That's what, uh, what I'm looking for. Uh, and then like, you can zoom in and then uh, you can see those numbers uh, as well. Now, here's the last thing. What are those, where those neighborhood exist? Like we, you know, let's say like we are not so familiar with like, for example, like a Dietmar Steinway, like where that go on the uh, neighborhood exists. We found out that neighborhood group, which has like Manhattan and Brooklyn or Queens, uh, if you happen to know New York, um, they are like five boroughs. So those information we can use. So like here's a color by, and I'm gonna use a neighborhood group. And then each neighborhood is in a color uh, by one of these uh, group. And then you can see some pattern. Can you see some patterns? So for example, uh, this like a sort of like outlier neighborhood, uh, except let's say like focus on this area. Okay. And then the green are the neighborhoods that uh, tend to be like kind of left hand side top. You remember this section is the one like a lower score uh, over compared to others, lower score in average and higher price, right, in average. So not so much, but where are those? So those are like Manhattan. So uh, Manhattan is a very expensive uh, part of the New York City. Um, that's where all the businesses are mostly. So kind of makes sense. And then now like purple, like the right hand side bottom, like this is where I, um, I was looking for, many like a purple, those are like a Staten Island, and then also red, like Queens, and then a little bit of the orange. And then just some like a um, green, like Manhattan. Uh, so this might be uh, some place, but I, I don't know, actually, I, I don't even, I never even heard of it. Um, so you can see some patterns, uh, which neighborhood are more expensive and uh, or high, uh, high school and so on. So that is, uh, you know, uh, we can use the bubble chart. But now one, another thing is, so each dot, um, each neighborhood, but some neighborhood has more property. For example, the Staten Island, they, do they have like, a lot of properties? Or Manhattan, they might have more properties. So in that case, we can use a size, Remember that like we use price and then revenue score rating. And so those, those two uh, numerical columns we're using so far, information we are using so far. But we can bring another information like with the number of rows. Um, then now the size becomes, uh, the size is basically representing the uh, number of the risks. So for example, here, Williamsburg, and then this is like better for the time, uh, Stuyvesant. And so those are the two neighborhoods had most uh, properties. And it seems like Williamsburg had a higher uh, score and also higher price. And compared to Stuyvesant, uh, Bedford Stuyvesant had a lower score and then less uh, price. But both of them have about the same amount of the uh, same number of the properties. Okay. So with that, again, um, we have more stuff, uh, basically the older slides, we're gonna, I'm gonna share this one after this, and a more detailed steps so that you can do by yourself or you can use it for your class or your, uh, you know, at your work, um, uh, whatever you like to do. And also there's a map section as well we couldn't cover. So please use it. And then now that I just wanna uh, do the last thing. So the next seminar, <clears throat> So we're gonna do like a part two, which is focusing on a time series data.